Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, and today I have for you a 1 vs 1 on Langre, yes indeed. Whoops, my apologies, but we are having a 1 vs 1 on Langre. It shall be an interesting fight. A hard fight. A fight with a lot of good men dying, and possibly also some bad men. But of course, who shall be doing the fighting when in the northern corner we are seeing Sir National, yes indeed, the National, fighting for the Wehrmacht, fighting for... The second Panzer Division, a person not exactly known for being the most well-mannered or entirely well-tempered at times, in particular when he's losing. Opposing him shall be, yes indeed, it's damn evil Vicious Mouse, the most fiendish, the most cruel-minded mice of all. Fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 1st Infantry Division, and let's get right down to this, let's not hang about too much. Already now, Flaps seems to be acting up a bit. That's never a good sign. Let's hope we survive this. Bags going up. Wehrmacht quarters. Of course, nothing highly unusual there. A bit of banter going back and forth. Both pioneer teams sitting to work on the Wehrmacht quarters. Both, no, no, both engineer teams actually going to work on that barracks. And the barracks actually looks to be a lot finished a bit faster there. Wehrmacht quarters up, and he goes straight for an MG42. And no infantry for Mr. National. He goes rather for the MG and possibly hoping to keep it behind his pioneers a bit, of course, which can be a bit dangerous. But of course, have to see how that works out. And of course, as always, feel free to send me in lots of replays. I'm a bit getting a bit, you know, on the short side of all the replays. At least, well, not the one for the Monday novice fight, of course, but the more, you know, reasonably ranked replays. Got a lot of two versus two, some good, some a bit too one-sided or something else, you know what I mean? It's not that the players themselves are bad, but you know, sometimes it's just a game where, for whatever reasons, the game is just clearly too much in one's favour. But we are seeing Ralph and Ready Hing to watch these and find. In fact, he looks like the National is using his MG42 to take the point. Of course, all infantry of some sort units like this can, of course, take points, but you know, it's a bit rare you see the MG42 do it, particularly early on, but you know, it could work. And there we go, Volkskrieg is on the way. Pani is advancing towards the east. He's rather focusing in the east. He's not deciding to spread out. That's of course also keeping things a bit more focused. Pioneers in the buildings are secured. And then probably moving up the MD-42 to take up a position in it. We are seeing Rifman flanking him out in the west. In fact, it looks like they could be set up for a straight path towards this point. But no, looks like the National had a change of heart. Decide to cover his approach right there, in fact. It looks like the Rifman did back off once to realize they'd be turned into minced meat. Jeep on the way from a damn evil vicious mouse going for a bit of disruptive start hopefully probably to try and flank around that MG42 swiftly and there we go Rifman do get suppressed false guns do move in the Jeep just fires away at the MG42 cutting down one doing oh quite a bit of damage forcing away the MG42 being behind the false guns to turn up with this mess Pioneers moving in to support but this is already looking a bit grim for the Wehrmacht Rifman down another down in fact Pioneers need to move up to support the false guns only this is one way where you can protect yourself against getting rushed by Rifem, and that's usually by teaming up with your full screen with some pioneers. And there we go, Rifem taking some damage. In fact, they're not looking too good, but they're not the full screen only those jeep that jeep is helping. And the MG42 needs to move out and looks like we might be seeing another full screen team. And meanwhile, oh dear, getting flanked by engineers, but the Rifem almost down. Oh dear, down to two men, forced to run the gauntlet. And they just barely survive. Well, the false gun is a forced to retreat with a bit more health. MG42 setting up at a nice distance. Or quite a bit of vicious fighting right there in the beginning. Not quite sure there who won, but probably damn evil vicious mouse since we were able to rather delay the national in taking any territory. And of course, since the jeep can just be repaired. And already look there, new windshield. Fancy that. False gun is advancing. Pioneers also moving about. Ready to get reinforced again. And these pioneers are still hiding in there, apparently just hoping to keep it safe for the MG-42. Jeep now under fire, and the National is not focusing down the engineers. That's actually a bit of an odd thing, because, you know, units that are repairing, laying down mines, sandbags, but why or anything like that, are actually easier to hit and take more damage. And, oh dear, National's positions are getting flanked by a unit inside this building, opening up with a nice broadside on the full screen. This is going to be a bit of a problem for the National. In particular, oh wait, no, never mind, he's getting flamethrowers. Those right now are certainly going to be feeling 
a bit hot any moment. There we go. And the Pioneers actually go down, only doing a bit of damage to the Rifleman, not killing anyone. That was less than spectacular. Other folks going to move into support. And now we are seeing a larger flank. MD42 turning about to meet the flank. But will it be able to stop? Wait, there we go. Flamethrowers forced away, but the Rifleman are charging from the front. Deep moving in as well. Flamethrowers turning back once the Rifleman are dealt with. No, the MD42 turns about again, stopping the engineers, suppressing them. And the Jeep just keeps shooting at the MG42 and the Falcon is now first forced to deal with that before the MG42 gets cleared out. And oh dear, oh, MG42 almost down, the Jeep's forced to turn away, certainly not looking a bit grim in human losses so far. Certainly Dev M is taking quite a beating, suffering quite some losses at the same time, though the Jeep is still there. And has so far managed three kills, that's definitely not bad. Pioneers reinforcing. We'll be seeing more false grenadiers. He doesn't need a third team of false grenadiers. No, wait. A fourth team of false grenadiers. He's going pretty heavy on the false grenadiers as well, Mr. National. He's feeling rather bold, actually. You know, it could be his opponent could have been, you know, going straight for an M8. But of course, he's rather feeling, of course, due to the early pressure. Of course, the sort of manpower rate of attrition he's doing on to Dev M, of course, that he's probably having a bit of an advantage. Of course, can push it with more infantry. I mean, that sort of thing you have to do a little bit of sense for, of course, how much do you actually kill for, how much manpower do you drain of your opponent, of course, how does that sort of build into a larger plan, because, again, he also has to sort of keep things at the front. If he decides to sort of pull away all from the front and then go for the aim, of course, you could easily gain the major control as you see most of the maps. So, of course, you there's a bit of a sort of larger mind game going on there. And looks like some false guy is coming under fire, but again, the pioneer sort of protect up close. The Rifleman can't just charge at them without taking some losses. But now, Jeep and engineers moving in to support the Rifleman. Although the Rifleman takes quite a beating. There we go, full retreat caused by flame for us. Lots of flame for us. Ima Flamen, therefore. And a bit of fun here in the center. MG42 turning about. False Grenadiers and MG42, where they could get flanked by all the flamethrowers. Oh, dear, and there's nothing to protect the flank because the rest of the forces over here. False Grenadiers. Flame for us. Oh dear, this is not looking good. And we are seeing a grenade. Oh bother, false guy team down, but the rifleman team could go down itself as well. And of course that means that he has gone for grenades, and there we go, they are down, they are dead. Tod nicht mehr. So that was a bit of a setback, but then again, it was a bit for both sides, having both lost an infantry team. We are seeing mines there by the National. Fultz is in flying for our pioneers moving forward. Cut off right there by, but of course, here's a fun thing. If you can actually secure this point, you can sort of ignore that, at least for a short while, so you can retake that before losing control to the rest. But certainly that's going to be quickly done. But then again, looks like the National might be able to change that about. He has gone now for the Kampfkraft Center, getting the Kampfkraft for his mana. Full cannons and flame for us flanking about here. Engineers forced away. Rifleman going up in flame. Mine there by damn evil vicious mouses. Rifleman though being forced away. Full cannons advancing and oh right into the mine. One man lost, never to be heard from again. Wait. No, he's actually wounded, but there are no medics, so never mind. He will be heard from again, but only shortly. Then he won't be heard from again. And now veterans one for infantry and veterans one for support units. Not bad, of course, MG42 certainly gained the most out of Veterans 1 for support units because that actually gives them increased accuracy and increased reload rate. I mean, not that it actually takes longer, but you know, shorter time. It's not entirely sure how to put that one otherwise. Mine's going down here. Mr. National quite keen on that and sniping away at the Riven, having gotten a sniper again. Rather heavy tier 1. Tree has ended up, of course, for damn you, Vicious Mouth, because he's rather needed to do that. And now he's going for his own weapon support center. Probably to get a sniper to deal with the other sniper. So far, quite the infantry fight. Pioneers advancing, they're bloody wounded. And false guns getting reinforced, of course, veteran C4 infantry, German infantry, that is, of course, gives them a bit of slight healing. So, of course, will help them as well. And keep them in the game longer. No matter where, of course, the tree is in, you actually have to be in near it, otherwise it won't work. Full is now coming under fire, there's nothing really supporting them except one lonely sniper. The MG42 is much too far away to actually provide any support. Again, it's also quite wounded. Pioneers, oh, could be going down. No, a mine saves them. And flame for pioneers keeping engineers at bay with their own fl oh, 
bother that. And the Pioneer team lost that fight. So another blow to the National. MG ready. And looks like the National is growing a bit passive, but now we are seeing a creek bags going up. Pioneers need to be reinforced, otherwise that's certainly going to take quite a bit of time to get up. False gun is forced away. Right from hanging about here. All a bit quiet for Devem. Damn evil vicious mouse. There we go, Pioneers are reinforced, and there we go. Much swifter construction rate of the Krieg barracks. False gun is in need of reinforcement, no further Upgrades from the Kampfkraft Center, no further Kampfkraft für die Truppen. Riflemen sneaking up on the east, more riflemen. No sniper as of yet. Engineers could be moving in from the east, west. Force guns could be sent in to stop them. And there we go, I believe that's the sniper, yes indeed. Army Scharfschützer. Let's go have a look at the Americans under Daniel Richard Mouse. He's gone for airborne, in fact, and why has he gone for airborne and thus the air reconnaissance because he can then uses that in combination with his own sniper sort of get the air reconnaissance in, spot the German sniper, shoot the German sniper, sniper. rather swiftly and there, no he didn't even have to, he just waited for the German sniper to sort of a bit unwarily reveal himself and then shoot him in the face rather up close in fact forcing away the false guys were just equipped with the shiny new MP40s on station. and now we are seeing a strafing run, my goodness Really getting some air support in and some more riflemen to replace the ones lost about time. We're losing a strategic sector. All a bit quiet at the moment. Looks like he's finally trying to cut the wire here, laid down by the national a lot earlier, which certainly have made things a bit moving harder moving from point here to point there. And looks like a mine was actually hit. Right there. And there doesn't seem to be any sort of counter movement. By less nationalists. Wait, mate, a minute. We're seeing a half track. He could be going for that now. Reconnaissance one moving in. And all is fine. There are no German snipers hanging about to shoot any of his good boys. False guys advancing. MD42 opening up on the rifle. Could get snapped. Mm. Wait, right there. Americans getting hit from all sides. And of course, negative cover is actually good against flame flows. That's actually the only thing he's good against, but. Don't tell your opponent that in the future. Engineers forced away. Half track advancing. Full scans moving in as well. Rackman caught inside the house. Bit of a push there against the forces of damn evil vicious mouse in the first infantry division. All the rifle inside the house actually it's proving to be quite the nuisance. Front B Interesting enough, there's been no attempt so far at neither a medic bunker or a medic station. And we are in fact now seeing a supply upgrade for damn evil vicious mouse. This is good to see. Half track moving about here, harassing some riflemen yet. Sticky bombs now ready for damn evil vicious mouse. Those if that half track is not careful, it's going to be in a bit of trouble. It's turned into a laundry van as the Americans deposit their dirty, smelly socks filled with explosives. Sniper on the move. Hold the and looks like Mr. National is getting the hint and pulling out of there. Looks like some rifles sneaking up on the east. Could be going for the victory point right there. Do a bit of harassment mentally as well. That's again ensuring that da Mr. National here can't really feel safe within whatever sort of territory is designated as the safe territories. So now moving in a counter force, while at the same time attacking from north, thus spreading out his forces. That's certainly a good move right there. Half track MG and some false guns holding that point. And the engineers hit a mine. Sticky bomb on the half track. Riflemen here forced away. Oh dear, they couldn't fact be going down if they're not too careful. And a German sniper out again. Victory point being retaken. Riflemen coming out of fire. Half track sort of trying to change forwards despite having a damaged engine. Come on, you can do it, I think. No, apparently not. Can actually see the driver there. Fun fit a little bit. Sniper moving about. Fox kind of sniped. Half track slowly inching forwards. 
And of course there's a bit of a problem here for the National because he actually revealed his own sniper a bit too early. Except... No, he's back at the base now actually, so never mind. Actually looks like the National has gone for a Goliath. Fancy that. If you would just use it then. Oh, well, in fact, seems a bit quiet at the moment. Nothing really happening. Small counter attack here. Mine keeps being avoided. It's another reconnaissance run. MG gunner sniped. Garden on the run. Let's def Folks going to get charged forward. Some with MP40s, some without. Oh dear, hitting a mine, some losses, and of course caught up in the open by Rifleman. Sniper getting charged at, MG not cut. Wait, he can actually cover, never mind. Of course, American Sniper awfully close. Goliath still not moving. Not ready to strike yet at the huge American David. And moving in, blazing away with MGs. Sniper opening. Oh, he has to be careful. There's an American Sniper right next. Close. And Sticky Bomb again on the half track. MG Gunners getting snapped but getting reinforced as well. And there we go, Goliath finally on the move. Engineers going in for the victory point right there in the east. Goliath advancing, getting suppressed, getting pinned. Getting hit by mines. Well, technically hitting the mines, grenading the MG again, killing one. And the Goliath is on the move. Veterans two for the sniper. Oh dear, the. Goliath could get him. No, he runs away before the dreaded Goliath blows up in his face, just like in the Bible. Oh losing wait, never mind. Point. We are losing a victory point. Looks like a bike now is ready for the Nationals to perhaps try and hunt down that sniper. Of course, another move could have been going for the third tier, getting some Sturm armory up, and then getting some armor cars and Stukes because snipers can't really touch those. Flamethrower engineers moving forwards. Not really much at the front at the moment. Goliath also moving out. Bike finding way, and currently, of course, he's gone for an M8. And the National currently does not actually have any real anti tank assets except the Panzer Faust's false grenades can get firing. Armored recon is on point. All a bit quiet. Fun fact about the Greyhound, it was not originally conceived as an armored car, it was actually originally conceived as an actual tank destroyer. Then the Americans sort of realized that probably wouldn't work and then decided to work on some actual tank destroyers. And then turn that into an armored car. A fuel point is being seized. The Americans are attacking through the sands as well, branching out to the west as well. A bit of harassment here on the fuel pump by some false gunners, but they could easily end up in trouble. F interesting enough, there's been no further veterancy upgrades for them. No veterancy too. Armored scripts for the Greyhound. <laughs> Half track moving forwards. Pioneers out in the east could run into some rifleman related problems and injuries. Looks like a pack 38 has been made ready. The Goliath still sneaking about, still unseen. Yes, sir. Get up, right is taking further losses. Despite being slight. And a grenade right there. Does no damage. The rifle now sneaking about here, but apparently being forgotten a bit. They could move forward. Then again, it could be they have other plans. Spike moving about. Goliath. Also moving about, of course, note it needs cover and then can actually cloak in a sort of ambush mode, can be useful. Unless, of course, you keep bloody well moving about close to the front line. Come on. Well, in fact, seems awfully quiet. Perhaps a bit too quiet. Half track moving forwards, what could it be? What could he have planned? He jumps out with two false gunners filled with MP40s. M8 actually has taken quite a bit of damage. False gunners charging forwards could be hoping to get off a of Panzerfaust. Oh dear. There we go, Panzerfaust and the M8 is kaputt nicht mehr. It is going on to join the other Greyhounds in heaven. Wherever armored vehicles go, when they get blown to bits, probably a junkyard. 
Right from sneaking about in the east. Oh, Pioneers hopefully close has to be careful. They could cook off the Goliath. Damaged engine. And now it's moving forward against the engineers. The engineers. Oh, doomed. Sniper fighting away. Forced retreat. The national has in fact gone for Tedor. Rather than getting shot up on the retreat, but not quite completely getting evaporated. Okay. Our front lines are Slaughtered, massacred, turned into something on the retreat. But still a bit of a blow there. Lost one M8, an engineer team, so it's down to four rifleman team, an engineer team, and that sniper who's actually still alive. Also has more infantry currently than the national. Oh, wait. Yes, indeed, he only has full screen ears, no grenadiers. Or medic banker to help with that. And sneaking about in the west, good move there. Well, he could have been able to get some of those rifleman, perhaps. And another strafing run right through the everything, spotting the force, and of course where the bloody sniper is, and of course getting your own sniper out of there. But at the moment, it's actually time for the mid-game analysis, yes indeed, and it's also time for a look at the National. And of course, what is the current situation? Currently, the National has a rather huge wedge for everything, thus separating some of the territories, in fact going for separating also from here, good move there. But at the same time, he's certainly done a bit of damage, he's holding a good point. Yet he needs to, of course, make something with it. He's now getting a mortar and he's getting the battle phase, of course. He's hoping for the Panzer Command to really solidify, so that's certainly not bad. But at the same time, a medic bunker, perhaps some further veterancy. More mines, all of those could be a good move. Or perhaps an observation post on some nice munitions point to perhaps sort of s go into combination with the terror doctrine, thus giving him more forced retreats and perhaps also later on some firestorms. You know, a bit of good coordination in between the uh, things there. Either way, he sort of perhaps needs to get a bit more prepared for the long run. A bit of veterancy always helps in that coordination, at least. But of course, the Panzer Command, with perhaps some Panzers and Knights Cross, will not be out of the way. On the other hand, of course, Mr. Damn Evil Vicious Mouse does have the supply out. He has a Trias, and of course, a medic station could help as well. And perhaps a bit of armor or some anti tank One guns. One and he also needs to attack perhaps through here, thus spreading out again the sort of defenses of the national, thus allowing him to not just set, collect them in all in one place, which of course is going to make it much harder to break them. Let's return to the fight. Bit of a standoff right here. Americans getting shot, sniped, gunned, and probably soon mortared as well. Yes, there we go, further sniping fire, false man is with a BAR just blasting away at the rifleman, another down. Further rifleman moving in. MP40 quick false man, he's, he's not moving in to actually deal with the rifleman, that's actually a bit of a bad choice now, he's actually doing it. Staying in cover, good, and medic pack, uh, mind you one thing, let's just briefly pause for that. Medic packs for your troops actually make them easier to hit slightly, so um, keep that in mind. So don't, you know, do it in the field, that can actually end up backfiring back down. Not sure why that to be that close. American sniper awfully there as well. 18 kills. Only 10 for the German. And we are seeing an anti-tank gun getting ready, and the National just doing a bit of harassment there, of course, cutting off. Really limiting amount of the amount of resources and, of course, population that Mr. Damn Evil Vicious Mouse can get. He's also floating a bit of resources now. Get some pioneers and build that thing. Was he getting veterans? No, no veterans. Wait, he's getting another pioneer team. Good, good. False guys arriving, and facing off. False guys getting into the building, but of course he should be aware there are grenades. Oh dear! Just barely gets out. Half track moves into the rescue. Opens out on the rifleman. No veterans for that either. That could also be helpful, you know. Bit of damage resistance. I believe it's his veterans here. Two or possibly three, then actually gains a damage increase. So that could also be helpful. And we are seeing a bit of shift in fighting. Rifle forced away again with heavy losses. Without doing much to the forces of the National and the second Panzer Division. And Pioneers are ready, but they're not really getting used. He's probably a bit occupied elsewhere. Rifleman and Flame for Engineers sitting through in these, doing a bit of damage, toasting some engine Pioneers. And Fox is charging at the sniper home to get him with MP40s, but no, once more that lucky sniper gets away. Right from now getting mortared and now getting shot up by the Fox Guns while they're suppressed. Oh, heavy losses, only one man left. 
and half track and right and foot gun is running away but now the anti-tank gun opens up and the half track and the half track needs to get away dear the half track's not going to make it is it no it's doomed gone nicht mehr tot kaput and foot gun is now taking heavy loss as well getting blown up although the uh, oh wait now mind retreat and some pioneers are now left to quickly salvage what they can from the half track to get that converted into munitions requisition the enemy has 300 points and that's always what I thought these sort of things represented not actual manpower not actual munitions not actual fuel but sort of the requisition you can actually get for the different things basically sort of considered from that high command of course also makes more sense of course there it's not because you're actually picking up munitions off of them in some cases it's because you're picking up useful spare parts and such which is worth munitions so there we go pioneers on the run panzer command almost up Force guns getting reinforced, sniper moving out. Rifle getting stopped. Oh, the center is looking a bit grim now. And there we go, Panzer IV on the move. And veterans we want for the Panzers, that's good. MD being forced away, and now looks like Damn Evil Vicious Mouse is turning the tide. Force gun, yes, and rifle facing off. Force guns charging right at the rifle, grenade lob, but to no avail. Medics stick pack right on them, of course, making them that much easier. And there we go, heavy losses need to retreat. Retreat, I said, not stand them out, looking silly. There we go. And a bit of fun here as Fultz can move forward, tearing through the riflemen. It's the home to our, oh, and a straight, oh, goodness gracious, losing a, a Fultz gun team right there to the strafing run. That was not what he had been expecting at all. Mortar rounds, though, landing amongst the Americans, doing a bit of damage to anti-tank and advancing. Panzer for almost ready, almost. Volkskrank is getting reinforced and he does need some more infantry at this stage. That would certainly be my recommendation. Panzer Kampfwagen 4, the workhorse of the Axis Panzers. The Axis Army getting ready. Although as the war passed on they were actually outnumbered by the Panthers. Bit of a list talked about fact there. They're losing territory. Of course, it does mean that the Panzer IV actually ends up being more expensive than the Panther in game. That would be a bit silly, I think. And would certainly require a bit more of an accurate armor model, I suppose, and some other bits. And we are seeing smoke being used here to actually cover taking the victory point. That's actually a bit of a rare thing seen, but not bad. And now the Panzer IV on the move. Moving in against the rifle, but unsupported, that could actually have ended up badly, but thankfully there's absolutely no American forces in the West. In fact, the entire West is quite sort of on its own, because everything else is right here in the East, sort of preparing for another direct assault. A bit of fortification work going on here. Another Panzer IV on the way. Pioneers in trouble. A bit of tank traps actually going on here, but then stopped. Not entirely sure why. Now the Panzer Force actually pulling back towards German lines. Still no attempt to do a bit of work there. You know, some pioneers or some grenadiers. And no, not an officer. Now we go Force Grenadier Force and win towards the east as well. Panzer Force nowhere to be able to support. In fact, it's just standing still there. That seems to be a bit of a bad distribution of Panzers. Force retreat now on the right and forcing them away most quickly. Very close to getting a King Tiger as well, or at least get being able to call him in, of course. Charging forwards, no veterans see two for the Volkswagen here still. Now charging at the rifleman, MP4 displacing. And rifleman are getting chewed up by the able to suppress the Volkswagen is actually with a suppressive fire. And a grenade force ends the issue. There's more rifleman now rushing in to sort this out as well. Even the rest run the gauntlet. Second Panzer IV is ready, but they're not really moving in. And where were they to support the infantry in the first place? Come on. And running into the Panzer IV, opening up with high explosive shells. But not quite actually hitting.
There we go. Actually moving around in the west now. That's what we want to see. Might want to get that from C2, for example, either for the infantry or the panzers. Of course, for the panzers, it won't do much since it don't just gives a machine gun, which is not really helpful, but you know, could get you to veteran C3 and the armored skirts and other bits. Banga going up here for the national. Panzer force being completely pulled back now. Right from under fire. Mortar a bit too close to the line, perhaps hoping to mortar that anti tank gun. Force can yes, moving forward. MG42 not really able to support either. Still no veteran C. No units being. Coming out and lots of resources being thrown. Mortar being charged, but mine saves it all. And now two anti tank guns. Force guns moving in, but they're out in the open with no veterans here again. Pants for shot. Will they be perhaps be trying for an attempt at flanking the anti tank guns? That could work. But no. And the sniper's not really doing anything either. Ready? And there we go, getting sniped. Still. The national seems a bit too passive for my liking. Much too passive. In fact, he's probably giving damn evil is just most too much time to actually put together a defense or something else very nasty. You have to be very careful about that. MD opening up on the rifleman. Mortar also blasting away. I mean, he actually has something that could help his panzers in just charging those anti-tank guns. What could that be, you ask? He has a mortar. He could lay down a smoke screen right there, charge right through it, and get right behind the anti-tank guns. Simple as that. And of course, if they decide to move, of course, they would be much more vulnerable to the tanks. So actually, either way, it would be a win-win situation. But sadly, the National is not really pulling it off. He seems to be lacking the flair of the Panzerleute. Panzer people of some sort, which is a bit of a shame since he does have two Panzer Force and a King Tiger, yet he lacks the Elan to really just move forward with a bit of proper support. And of course now the mortar is no more, of course he could quickly recruit and of course get down the smoke cover, do the right thing, or just move in that Panzer Force to flank, of course. Move in some infantry support, you know, there we go, more to recruit. Right inside there, and mines laid down. Oh dear, there we go. Panzer's actually flanking. Mines it off, and yes, taking quite some beatings. Panzer force opening up on the anti tank gun. Then it return to damn you, Vizzy's mouse. Anti tank gun almost down. There we go, cleared out. But the arrival are getting too close. Panzer force need to pull out, pull away before they're getting sticky. Bombed. More snipers actually getting out for damn evil, Vizzy's mouse. Anti tank and recruit, but cleared out again. King Tiger pulling away, though not sure why it hasn't taken much damage, and he could actually clear out that anti tank gun. Oh dear, that's a bit of a misstep there. Panzer Force no moving forward. Come on, Forbets, men now. The King Tiger is strong because of all that armor, so you know, use it properly. Force gun is moving in, getting grenaded. Hoping to clear out that anti tank gun, you know. Much too late there. Could have cleared it up had he been properly up with those panzers. And now Rafael moving in from the west. Mortar being there. Now he's giving up again. Come on, National. Push forwards. Push the issue. Push those Americans back into the sea. But no. Mortar now getting forced away. Panzer 4 moving in to try and sort that out. And still no further infantry units coming up for him. We are probably going to be seeing no, no further anti-tank guns. Not at the moment. He's being rather forced to be in force a lot. And he's exposing the rear of the King Tiger. Oh, phew. But he really needs to get better, you know, pushing onwards. You no, know, he's just hanging back. Really seems to be his major issue right here. He seems to be a bit too keen on hanging back, you know. In particular, when he has a King Tiger and two Panzer Force. And he probably could have, uh, you know, pushed forward and made things a lot harder for Mr. Damn Evil Vicious Mouse. There we go again. Two anti tank guns now, he could still probably sort it out in some manner. Not quite though, still. Bit of smoke from that mortar. And then just a charge for the fatherland, and it could probably all be sold. 
And he's moving in the King Tiger, but nothing else, and he's not moving up the mortar either. Rather moving up there, mines getting sorted out by the mines reapers, that is good. Panzer for all here on its own. Feeling so lonely. King Tiger getting blasted away, opening up into rifle inside the house, Panzer for moving into support. Mortar not really helping. Enemy unit down. Troops getting sniped. Right from the Ting is surviving surprisingly large amount of high explosive shells and not dying quite as much as they could, although the house is starting to look a little less worse for wear and certainly not very easy to sell. Bike moving right into the entire mess of it and getting knocked out. Not entirely sure why. And Rifleman trying to clear out the mortar. Could be succeeding. Yes, and nope. They're going off with a sticky bomb instead. And then the mortar gets sniped. Rifleman team slaughtered, leaving behind with only three. No further anti tank guns. No real again attempt. Really hits push through, which is again is quite sad and not quite helpful. And looks like damn evil vicious mouse is turning things about. Be recruiting the mortar again. No. Another anti tanker now on the way. That's going to make things harder for a panzer attack. And as of course he decides to pull off a flanking assault, but something tells me that doesn't really seem to be within the finesse field of the national. Seems to be a bit more keen on just charging right ahead. A strafing run, doing a bit of damage to the Volkskaniers. Still no further infantry bits. We are instead seeing a firestorm which absolutely managed to do very little damage. Not even knocking out one anti tank gun. Probably not what was hoped for. Of course, all anti tank guns sort of point in that direction, so I suppose if he were to feel bold. He could move his tanks towards the elite with the King Tiger crash through the Bokash and then sort of try to hit them from the flank. But that doesn't seem really to be what's happening. Bit of a shame that. Of course, damn you, Lucius Mouse is keeping his anti tank guns together to get the most volume of fire towards the target, assembling a bit of his own pack front right there. Which was a bit of a German tactic of basically putting all anti-tank guns reasonably close together under one command and then basically have them n fire in mass at one target at a time, thus really being able to swiftly knock out tanks originally developed on the eastern front. And now he's trying to blow up his own mortar. That seems like a bit of a waste. Moving in the Panzer IV, not the King Tiger, which is not bothering to repair with further pioneers. All a bit quiet, let's actually speed this up. This is not going to be much more exciting. Now laying down a minefield again, he's giving much too time to damn evil vicious mouse. MG cleared out. Looks like some knights cross holders have actually arrived, but again that could be simply too late. Bit of fun here in the west. Now the anti tank is advancing. Knights cross moving forward. Oh wait, slowed down too much. And all quiet. Now opening up on that repair bunker. This is starting to look pretty damning. A Panzer Commander has lost all seal. He's certainly no Latrodectus. Let us just speed this up then. And could this be it? Could this be the charge of the not quite as light brigade? There we go, strafing run sorts up the infantry. Now the Panzers are advancing, the Panzer Force leading, taking most of the fire with probably armor piercing rounds being used. Doing most a lot of damage. Now the King Tiger is turning about Panzer Fort down. Kaput, nicht mehr, brewed up and lost. Now the King Tiger is taking quite a bit of volume in the rear. 
and that's why T4 is so useless. We are wish you're not doing anything with it, mate. And there we go, another. No, oh, that's a King Tiger. Oh dear. Another strafing run, and another loss. There we go. So there we go. Game over. A victory for the first infantry division. The second panzer division acting two losses in the hands of a too timid commander. So there we go. Actually, what can we learn from this? Well, you know, again, in this case, it was a bit of a lack of, you know, aggressiveness from, you know, the national side. He sort of hung about with his panzers. He didn't try to you know, attack from other angles. I mean, even with all those anti-tank guns, he'd probably been trying to push the mana from perhaps, you know, an angle where they couldn't do so much. He might have been able to do something. Sadly, th that did not happen. He was sort of a bit too keen, you know, charging right into hit into a wall when he finally did something, you know, not good. Again, lack of medic bankers from him. In particular, when he had four full scan teams would have been great. And generally not enough infantry during the whole fighting. I mean, we saw some good maneuvers from like that half-track early on, but, you know, other times, you know, it just fell apart. Not too good. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends. And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own. This is Imperial Dane saying, remember your seal. Cheers.